Hi everyone and welcome to the Upper Geyser Basin area. Believe it or not, today is a bluebird sky day. I know it doesn't look like it, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. We're going to be heading off from the Mystic Falls hike. And uh, I've pointed this out to you before. For some reason at the trailhead over here, they don't have a sign saying Mystic Falls the way they do over there, which says Daisy. But just remember, you're right across the road from the Daisy Geyser Trailhead. That's Biscuit Basin over there. And Old Faithful is just up the road over there. My old friend Trixie, also known as Cammy, is with me today. And there's two ways that uh, you could start this hike. You can either start over here, and we'll see it says that Mystic Falls is 1.4 miles down this loop over there. Here's, uh, there's Biscuit Basin. So you can start over here, and this will take us to the back end of Biscuit Basin itself. So, which also means that uh, you could start the hike in Biscuit Basin itself, walk past Sapphire Pool to the, I guess it would be the east end, and uh, then uh, make a small turn, and from there you would uh, take, the, take the trail to Mystic Falls. Now, remember, bear spray. We're headed into the back country, we're taking our bear spray. Trixie, do you have your bear spray? Outstanding. And while this is a personal choice, I generally take the safety off. That way if we do come across a bear and need to use the spray in a hurry, it's uh, a lot easier to, uh, to get the bear spray going. You don't have to worry when you may be panicked to, uh, about, uh, about getting the safety off. Now, those of you who've seen quite a few of these videos may recognize this. Uh, this was done separately as a freestanding video to show you another way to get into Biscuit Basin. And you can see that in our virtual Yellowstone Tours channel. If you go to virtualyellowstonetours.com, that's virtualyellowstonetours.com. Excuse me, you can see it in our YouTube channel. Now, I'd mentioned before that today is actually supposed to be a bluebird sky day. And the reason that there's all this haze around is because of a big fire that's burning not too far away from Old Faithful. It's uh, been given the name the Lone Star Fire. Called that because it's... Uh, it's burning pretty close to the Lone Star Geyser. And uh, all this haze all is really smoke that's, uh, that's coming off the fire. And it's been around for a couple of weeks. It should be a beautiful time of the year to be out. It's the beginning of September, it's the fall. The temperature is just great for taking a short trip into the close by back country. And it's a shame that there's all the smoke around. What we're on is actually the Continental Divide Trail. It's obviously a very small section of it. And uh, where I previously showed you the sign saying Daisy Geyser, that was the, uh, that's also part of the, con the Continental Divide Trail. The Divide Trail is a hiking trail that runs all the way from the Mexican border in the south up to the Canadian border in the north. So it traverses uh, from south to north or north to south an enormous section of the United States. And you have some people trying to do it in one season and others uh, do it over the course of several years. These are what we call bobby socks trees. I suppose you'd have to be pretty old to remember the bobby socks fashion, but uh, it refers to the white socks, 
that used to be worn and you can see at the bottom of these trees that they're white and what's uh, made them go white and remember those orange markers I'll get back to them and what makes them go white is the center in the area this is all center over here and center is one of the minerals that gets brought up from underground by uh, water erupting from geysers or coming up from hot springs uh, I uh, mentioned that, uh, remember, remember the little orange markers, we can see one on this tree coming up ahead of us. And uh, this will be an area where in the winters, if you're staying at Old Faithful, you can come cross-country skiing. And the orange uh, shows you where the trail is, because there's just so much snow here. In the winter it's impossible to see where where the trail is, the way that we can in the summers. There's another one up there. It may be useful to take a look at a map of the area to see where we are. If you go to one of our sites, westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, that's westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, and I'll drop in a section over here. you can see just where Biscuit Basin is and where this, where this trail is. We're very close to Old Faithful. Daisy, that Daisy Geyser Trail that I showed you at the start of this video will lead us uh, into the Upper Geyser Basin itself. Almost half of the world's thermal features are located right here at Yellowstone in the Upper Geyser Basin has about 150 geysers in a space of uh, just one square mile. So we're very close to the Upper Geyser Basin, basically in between where you see Biscuit Basin on the map and uh, Old Faithful and the Upper Geyser Basin. Is Trixie still with us, do you suppose? I was telling you about this Continental Divide Trail, how oh, some people will try and do it in one season and others will do it over the space of a couple of years. You try and come through this area, which is one of the higher areas of the trail, uh, somewhere around the end of June into July, beginning of August so you don't have to deal with trudging through the deep snow. I've mentioned in other videos that our company operates Yellowstone Taxi and we'll get people calling us from the Divide Trail where it comes out about 10 miles to the west of the town of West Yellowstone. Oh, what is that, a bluebird? A mountain? No. That lovely blue tail there. Um, the Continental Divide Trail comes out about, uh, or crosses um, US Highway 20, about 10 miles to the west of the town of West Yellowstone. And we'll get people coming out on the trail who will give our taxi company a call, wanting to come into West Yellowstone and uh, spend some time in a motel or an Airbnb, get a decent meal and they will have sent supplies ahead to the post office very often and they'll pop in and pick them up. So this is uh, Biscuit Basin over here and uh, we can see some people who've got a backpack, at least one of them, uh, several backpacks and it looks like they've decided to access the trail from Biscuit Basin as opposed uh, to the more sort of backcountry routes uh, that, that we took. 
As I mentioned at the start of this virtual Yellowstone tour, there are two ways that uh, you can access the main trailhead to Mystic Falls. This is the second of the two. As you saw a moment ago, and incidentally on the right is first Black Opal Pool and then Black Diamond Pool. As you saw a moment ago, you can park in the parking lot at Biscuit Basin and then take the little bridge over the Firehole River and you'll be in Biscuit Basin itself. It's not as prominent or as well known as the three main geyser basins in this part of the park, which uh, are the Upper Geyser Basin, the Midway Geyser Basin, and the Lower Geyser Basin, but it's still a beautiful geyser basin. And that area on the left there always reminds me of coral. Now, this bacteria mat that you see here, this greenish yellow one, used to be my favorite bacteria mat in all of Yellowstone. Now I'm not so sure because I went out for a hike this year to Imperial Geyser and the bacteria mats there are absolutely stunning. This bacteria mat is coming off what's called Sapphire Pool. And it was Sapphire Pool many years ago that gave Biscuit Basin its name. Um, Sapphire Pool that we see uh, in front of us at the moment used to have these biscuit-type deposits all around the edges of Sapphire Pool. And then in 1959, there was a gigantic earthquake that was centered not too far away from Yellowstone Park. It was called the Hebgen Lake Earthquake, and that created, uh, amongst other things, Quake Lake. And as a result of that uh, earthquake, the biscuit formations that were around Sapphire Pool um, were literally blown away and uh, they didn't uh, exist anymore. Now, in the background there where you see those green trees, that is where the uh, trail to Mystic Falls goes. If we continue up this boardwalk over here and where you see those people in the background, they're actually on the... Um, they're coming off the Mystic Falls Trail. And in a moment, you'll see where we can turn left and meet up with the uh, Mystic Falls Trail and now back to the actual virtual Yellowstone tour. There's some beautiful dead trees around, aren't there? And I think I'm going to stop here and wait a moment. Oh, Trixie. And Trixie has joined us. And we can continue along the hike. Park Service is really good about putting up these boards and having said that, is there anything left on this one? Yeah, I guess there is. Morning.
Hi there. And after just a couple of minutes of walking, we're in the back country. And up ahead of us is where the trail splits up into a big loop. If we go to the right over here, uh, it's a steeper way to get to an overlook. If we go to the left, we'll head down to Mystic Falls and then we can continue up. Uh, I suggest you do this in a clockwise direction as it's a little easier to walk up the elevation that you're going to be coming to. And I'm gonna stop here and wait for Trixie anyway. How are you doing? Well, how are you doing? Well, that Summit Lake Trail takes you quite some distance uh, and it will eventually bring you to uh, the Yellowstone boundary where it uh, basically crosses, well, you're already in Idaho, but uh, once you leave Yellowstone, you'll be in the state of Idaho proper.
sounds like we're meeting up with the Little Fire Hole River and Mystic Falls flows over, well, the Little Fire Hole River flows over Mystic Falls and this is going to be alongside us for a while the Little Fire Hole meets up with the Fire Hole River itself just before you get to Biscuit Basin, which I've mentioned to you a couple of times And it's time for another Trixie break. Boy, it's a shame it's so hazy and so smoky, isn't it? It should be a beautiful blue sky today. We'd had blue skies forecast all week. And the day I decide to come out and do this video, the wind changes and the smoke from the Lone Star Fire heads off in our direction. This is pretty though, isn't it? Even with all the smoke right next to the little fire hole. And this is a hiker made trail as opposed to a park set up trail just down to the river and with Trixie being a little bit behind me I think I'm going to come down and take a look
Boy, the smoke is getting really thick now. Apart from being able to see it, you can really smell it. meant uh, when we were at that point where we could have gone one way or the other on this big loop, namely that the incline is less here, it's a bit steeper the other way, although obviously we cover the same elevation. Can you see where that guy is in red up at the top there? And you can start to see the falls coming into view. There they are over them. with me I'm just dropping it so I can take a picture or two and continuing on the trail to get a bit closer to Mystic Falls and then depending on how Trixie is feeling we'll probably take the loop which you can see up there back uh, to the overlook of Mystic Basin and go back that way Hi, no problem. But that's where the trail continues. This is another one of those hiker made trails. So if you can just detour to be a little bit closer, but do be careful if you do this. That's pretty darn loose. Uh, easy to fall. Thank you, appreciate that. about a 70 foot drop. You can see that the falls are really more of a cascade than a fall as a two waterfall as it comes over multiple levels. <laughs> 